Um, so at dis dissection in the Māori population, that's uh, a unique issue to New Zealand and it actually raises some really interesting points, not just in dissection but aneurysm work as well, that I've looked at. Uh, Māori, meaning normal, natural, ordinary, they've been the locals in these fair isles for about a thousand years. And this is a, the sort of thing we'd like the world to think about Māori, the fine art, the hobnobbing with the royalty. We make billions and billions of dollars out of their cultural iconography and the rugby. Um, you know, unfortunately, these are things we don't like to think about so much as these health inequities between Māori and non-Māori in New Zealand. When you look at these numbers, there's about seven years difference between the life expectancy at birth between Māori and non-Māori. This is a shame. This is a national shame. These numbers, 77, 73, they're pretty similar to the Vietnamese life expectancy at birth. This is a paper that was uh, released this year, 2017, looks at our cardiovascular disease, obviously the biggest killer in uh, first world. So not surprisingly, we have some pretty big differences in these outcomes. If we start at the bottom actually, something both close to our heart, rheumatic heart disease, our rates of 1 versus 5.4, I mean that, that's terrible. Heart failure mortality, same picture. Stroke mortality, and when you get right to the top, putting these numbers all together, 132.4 per 100,000, uh, it's in 35 years plus, so it's assumably adults, in the non Māori versus 268.8 in Māori. Um, you know, they're pretty striking figures. And it's not surprising, therefore, that we see the differences in the modifiable risk factors hypertension, obesity, smoking, type 2 diabetes. Um, and this uh, graph from the Ministry of Health website actually really com shows yeah. the differences of yeah. rural Māori versus urban Māori. Four times. They're even worse. Yeah. So this is the paper released a couple of years ago out of our department looking at just type A aortic dissection since the unit began in about 1989. So we had 143 type A dissections. These were patients that were operated on. So bearing in mind, these are not people that were managed non-operatively. Um, and when you look at, um, to start with, just the pure numbers, uh, Māori made up 37.5% of this population. Now bearing in mind, the Waikato catchment area, now that includes Gisborne, Taranaki, Tauranga, um, you know, it's a, it's a huge catchment area, it makes up about 25% Māori. So you can see they're grossly overrepresented in um, Taipei aortic dissection. Another really interesting thing is you look at the age at what they're presenting. That's a difference of six years on average between Māori and non-Māori. And another interesting difference in New Zealand, both ethnicities, is we don't seem to have such a strong predisposition for male gender in our dissections. Looking at a few of the risk factors, um, there are some increases in Māori. Although I always think in this case, especially in Waikato, what is their access to healthcare to get these diagnoses? So I wonder what the true burden of the population actually is. And the last one I find really interesting, there's some interesting work out of, from our cardiology colleagues actually looking at Māori access to cardiovascular intervention, for instance, stenting and bypass surgery. And you can see the admissions are a lot higher on the non-Māori side. If we look at when you do some calculations looking at their prevalence, uh, you can see the statistically significant difference between Māori and non-Māori, not surprisingly. And again, it's statistically significantly different looking at the ages. Uh, quite terrible when you compare, you especially look, and it's behind me, it's a bit difficult, but the Māori female 30-day mortality at 45.5%, which is double non-Māori men and Māori men, and although you see it, the same trend in the non-Māori female, it's just far and away worse. Conveniently, I've done a bit of research for the vascular side and the mm. AAA uh, stats look very similar. Māori women are doing terribly. The late survival continues in the same sort of trends. Uh, so the top line, you have uh, non-Māori women, non-Māori men, uh, Māori men and Māori women right at the bottom. 
though bearing in mind by that end of that six years we're getting out some of them to quite small numbers. So that was a couple of years ago and I wanted to bring something new and exciting because I'm sure you've all read that paper. Um, so I, I emailed the Ministry of Health, not really expecting much of a response. It kind of your email goes out to the ether and you wonder if you'll get a response, but they did, which was awesome. And I was really excited geekily about doing the stats. Unfortunately, it was only in the middle of last week, so it didn't give me a lot of time. But anyway, what I asked for was the ICD codes for 171.0, which is all aortic dissection, not just type A or B. I got the last year of mortality, that's when they were released, is 2014. And also the publicly funded hospital discharges for the three years, 14, 15, 16. Pretty safe, you know, there's not a lot of private, certainly not acute dissection work. Um, so I think it's going to be fairly accurate in um, picking up presentations. One thing to bear in mind there is it only um, counts one patient. So one patient might have had two or three admissions in that time, but they are, is only counted as one person. I got asked them to give me a DHB domicile, so I'm really looking forward to going back and comparing each uh, catchment area, but that's for next weekend. Uh, gender, age, uh, importantly for the hospital discharges, it was uh, only five-year age group, so some creative maths for those comparisons. Uh, and ethnicity, which once again I kept to just Māori, non-Māori, um, to make it uh, the numbers more realistic. So I got those on the 24th, uh, just last week. So there's some interesting things here. Once again, you look at the numbers. So the Māori population in New Zealand is 14.9%. So once again, that 21.5%, they're grossly overrepresented in aortic dissection deaths in 2014. When you work it out as an incidence, you can see 3.34 per 100,000 versus 2.17. And sure, it's not quite a p-value, which Mr Parkinson will hate me for mentioning, but it's pretty close. Uh, you can see that average age difference is, is still significant, seven this years. And that is majorly dissection. different. The animals are when we look through to the public health, uh, public hospital discharges due to aortic dissection 2014 to 2016, again, Māori are majorly overrepresented. And because we've got larger numbers, because it's over three years, that does now strongly uh, have statistical significance. 6.9 per 100,000 population versus 4.78. And that number is also quite interesting when you start looking internationally at some of the rates. The average age, uh, I haven't done a p-value there for some integrity in my statistics because I had to average those five-year differences, but I think with a 10-year age gap, you can be pretty confident that that is a significant difference. And once again, the gender really hasn't um, got much between the two ethnicities in New Zealand. So whatever way you look at it, we've got a lot of work to do. Who's with me? And it is noticeable on all aspects of cardiac surgery because we do coronary artery surgery and there's very often that you come to do coronary artery surgery and the root is enlarged. Yeah and you come to do an aortic valve and the root is enlarged. So there is other things apart from dissection. And this is why we were saying earlier on for a small unit like ours, we do a lot of dentals and, and uh, root sort of intervention um, more than the fair share that a small unit should be doing. So they're, they're definitely, you know, and then on, if I take the total uh, patients that come into us, so we have nearly 700 cases a year, 350 of those are Māori, who are all around, you know, this area. They should be less because the white population are more. You know what is the reason? Uh, we can't tell. There's some interesting genetic <laughs> stuff. Um, Basu know more than myself, but pathology are doing some interesting genetic work, especially down at the University of Otago. So I think that picture will be filled in a little. I, obviously, the socioeconomic stuff is a large component of it, but... Mm. Um, I think we'll find more and more. Thanks also for the food. Uh, I don't know what is the reason because uh, in many population in Asia, Japan, there is high incidence of aneurysm, very very high. Mm. Also in China, uh, in China the people uh, smoke many many persons, mm -hmm. abuse of the tobaccos, no. 
In Japan, I don't know. I don't know if it depends on the food. Because in Japan, many persons eat the, the, the fish and the, the, the salt, probably. The salt is one of the, probably, no? causes. I don't know. The soya also. I think the socio-economic thing is probably going to be one of the driving factors. Um, I'll show you maybe in the next talk. We, we look after a very poor population of people, uh, which you sometimes wouldn't believe in Hong Kong. But one of the drivers, I think, Roberto, is access to primary health care. So our guys have got no free primary health care. So they don't go and get their blood pressure checked. They don't get their diabetes looked after or diagnosed early. And as you know, a lot of these are quite silent killers. So in our population, particularly with the acute dissections, I think we put it down to undiagnosed and long-term severe uh, hypertension. hypertension. And then that goes back to bursting Adam's bubble, I think, doesn't it? With wall stress and yeah, 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 yeah. So hypertension again is a problem Japan. in New Zealand and, and that's a, a really big issue especially you know in the Maori population where access to GP again is expensive so I don't know I think we it's, it's a, a fascinating area that we need to study uh, just a comment um, if we look at the uh, relative cardiovascular death rates in the different uh, health boards within our community of which there are five um, so in Tarafiri which is the um, population with the highest Māori population, which is about 49% Māori population, the percentage that die from cardiovascular disease is 40%. And when you look at the proportion of investigations that they have, they're significantly less. Uh, and so when you look at the Waikato population, the proportion of the people that die from cardiovascular disease, I can't remember exactly, I think it's 32, 33%. So it's actually a really significant difference. And if you look at, at the care that's provided for the people, um, essentially it's roughly 20 years backwards. Uh, so that's not the only thing. It's just part of the picture. D Damien, you had a question? Well, it's just a comment more than anything that similar to back home with Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander, it's also on the flip side of things. So we speak about the incidence of presentation, but it's also the post-op care. So a lot of people get lost to follow up. So uh, I don't know what the numbers or things are like here, but I know back in New South Wales that was an issue. I know geography is more of an issue in Australia. It's just a larger I have country. So much more, you know, than what I presented <laughs> today. But you're quite right. All of you, most of these people presenting have never seen a doctor before. You know, and they haven't got any of these diagnoses on their discharge summaries, on their mortality discharge summaries, because they've never seen a doctor. Um, I've looked at, that's where I mentioned the, there's some really interesting access to um, stenting and, and cabbage is poor. I looked at all the follow-up and the vascular interventions in the, in the future and trying to find anybody who's had imaging follow-up was really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> um, even if I, you know, I contacted every health board and I, it would only be a third. It's a lot better now, admittedly. I think in the past it was possibly not done so well. Um, now there's more that we're doing, I think it is better. But and the other one was the Gisborne aspect. I got those numbers, I didn't bring them because they're not broken down so much, but double the amount of admissions from here, from Parafti, um, so as an incidence, and they all had terrible outcomes, 20, 30% mortality at 30 day compared to our averages. Um, so there's no question that that is an absolute sinkhole in, in health inequity there. Sorry, I, I, I think Mark's point is quite valid because there's a, <clears throat> recent pilot study from Otago which looked at factors for abdominal aortic aneurysm screening and one of the things that was pretty glaring was the higher the cardiovascular risk score in that group, the higher the incidence of aneurysmal disease. And I'm sure that if we extrapolate it to aortic dissection and ascending aortic disease, mm -hmm. we're going to find a very similar comparison as well and just in terms of that. So there's some work that's already gone on and we have a national aortic screening program committee which is using the cardiovascular risk score and the GPs have now become very good at using cardiovascular risk scoring um, to pick out the higher risk ones that they would manage more aggressively and those are the ones that are going to come forward to the screening program and incidentally unlike the British program 
we are going to screen both men and women from 55 because the cardiovascular risk scoring would suggest a much higher score that even women sit at from 55.